Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 14.36, okay? It says, the spring has a stiffness k equal to 50 pounds per feet and an unstretched length of 2 feet, as shown. It is confined by the plate and wall using cables so that its length is 1.5 feet. A 4 pound block is given a speed VA when it is at A and it slides down the incline having a coefficient of kinetic friction means of k equal to 0.2. If it strikes the plate and pushes it forward 0.25 feet before stopping, determine its speed at A. Neglect the mass of the plate and spring. Alright, so basically what we're giving in here, we got our block has an initial velocity and it's going to hit this spring. And when it hits the spring, it's going to compress it by 0.25 feet just right before stopping, okay? So the first thing that I like to do in these problems is write out my given since there are so many. So let's start with um, our k equals to 50 pound per feet. Then we're given that we have an unstretched length of two feet. So I'm going to write it as unstretched equal to two feet. Then we're given that um, we are actually compressing, so I'm going to call this compressed length, so compressed, is equal to 1.5 feet, all right? We're given that the weight, so I'm gonna write it over here, is equal to four pounds. And since we know the weight now, we can calculate that the mass is equal to four over 32.2. And this is basically just gravity in English units. We're given mu of k, which is equal to 0 0.2. And the last thing that they're giving us is that when this hits, it pushes, pushes forward 0 0.25 feet. So I'm going to be a compressed length number two. And this is going to be equal to, well, if I push forward, meaning that the length is going to decrease by 0 0.25. So that will give me 0 1.25 feet. Okay, that's the length of my um, spring in the three cases, okay? So after we wrote basically our givens, let's go ahead and do a free body diagram. Like in any of these problems, mainly all of them need a free body diagram. All right, so we have our block. It looks something like this. All right. Now we're going to do this free body diagram when the block is already before stopping, meaning that the spring is already in contact and the spring will want to push my block in this direction. So I'm going to call this one my F of S, force of the spring. We also have the weight of our block, which is equal to basically four pounds. We have the normal of this block with respect to that the surface is doing. So this is my normal. And the last thing we have is that we have kinetic friction, meaning that we will have a force against the velocity that we have. Well, since we're moving towards the left side, our friction will want to go up or to the right, okay? So we're going to call this one F of F. All right, so just to give a real, like a little recalling, my frictional force is equal to my co my coefficient of kinetic friction times my normal force, okay? But what is this normal force? So in order to solve for this normal force, what we first need to do is going to do a summatory of forces, okay? So summatory of the forces, in the y direction. Now, what is the y direction in this diagram? So I'm going to assume that my coordinates go like this. This will be my x direction and this will be my y direction. Okay, so as we can see, f of f is in the x, f of s, and then n is in the y direction. However, my w is not entirely in the y direction. So what we need to do is do a small analysis in here what we have is that this angle, the angle of the plane, all right, is given by this three, four, five triangle. Therefore, the weight by just a small 
um, since the weight is in this direction, right? It's like this. So by geometry, the weight can be also be given as a three, four, five triangle. Okay. So let me write it over here. So we will have my three, four, five triangle in here. And we're going to now that we know this is our axis. Well, let me just leave it here. This is our, our axis. We're going to assume that going up is positive. So what do we have? Well, we have negative 4 over 5 of my W, meaning of 4 pounds. And then we have positive my normal force. And all this should be equal to 0. Why is this equal to 0? Because we're not moving in this y direction, okay? So if we solve for my normal, this is just basically 16 over 5, and we can just leave it like this in a fraction. All right, so after we're done, basically uh, with this free body diagram, we know all the forces, since we know also uh, n, we will also know my friction. What we are going to do is we utilize chapter 14 equations. So basically we're going to utilize the principle of work and energy equation in, in order to find our velocity. And since the principle of work needs the sum of your works, we're going to utilize the work of a spring force, okay? Since we have a spring in our system. So let's just start with this equation. We got T1. Well, T1 is going to be one half. The mass, well, we know that the mass is 4 over 32.2 times the velocity. Well, this velocity at A is the initial velocity, meaning the velocity that we want to find. So I'm going to write it BA squared. What else do we have? Then we have the summatory of all the works done by the forces. So which forces do we have? So remember, we're moving towards the left. So let's just start with which force goes to the left. Well, the weight does a little bit of force towards the left. It does three-fifths. So let's start with that. We got three-fifths of the force of the weight and times the distance. Okay, so what is the distance? Well, the distance that it traveled in order to hit this was three feet. But in addition, it moved the spring 0.25. Therefore, it moved 3.25 feet all right what other forces do we have in the x direction well we got the force of the spring and we have the frictional force so let's start with the frictional force and in this case it's going to be negative and the reason for that is that it's going in the opposite direction of my velocity so we got negative and the frictional force which is mu of k 0 0.2 times n which is 16 over 5 all right, let me move this out of here so we don't get confused. Let me move this a little bit higher up. I think that should be fine. All right, so we got uh, the force is 0 0.2, right? The mu of k times n. Now we need to multiply by the distance. So all the distance that it moved in that direction is the same. And then the last thing that we have is the force of the spring, right? Now the force of the spring, we're going to utilize this equation. So the force of that spring is going to be minus, given by the equation, one half K, which is given as 50 times S2. Now, S in this equation mean how much did the spring got compressed or stretched. So, or my point two, meaning when it's stopped, we know that it moved an additional 0 0.25, right? So we have the compressed 2 in here. But my own stretch is 2. So the amount on stretch is 2. And then we stretch it until it was 1.25, meaning that the amount that this distance of this spring got covered was actually 7, 0.75. So we got 0 0.75 squared minus 1 half K, which is 50 times S initial. Well, S initial, we're given the initially it was compressed by 1.5, meaning that initially is 0 0.5 feet already compressed. 
and this is going to be equal to t2, all right? So, however, in t2, the good thing about this problem is that t2 happens when the velocity specifically is equal to zero, meaning that it's just before it stops. So this velocity is equal to zero, my entire t2 is going to be equal to zero. So now we have this big equation with only one unknown, which is our velocity, and that's good because that's the one that we want. So let's simplify this problem. Let's start by doing this one half four over 32, and this will give me a total of 0 0.06 to one VA squared plus, and then this other number will be equal to 9.75 minus, and then 2.08, I'm just doing this number is that one, this one is this one, and then we're gonna have minus, and then we're gonna open this parenthesis, and we're going to have 14.0625 for the first multiplication group, and then we're going to have minus, and then we're going to do this second group, and that will give me a total of 6.25. We close our bracket equal to zero, okay? So I'm going to do this, the one with our variable, I'm going to leave it still, and we're going to apply all this addition, okay? So after we add all of them, we have a total of negative 0.1425, and this is equal to zero. Therefore, we're going to solve for VA. It's going to be equal to, and we're going to have 0 0.1425 divided by 0 0.0621. And all this is going to be in a square root or to the power of one half, and will give us a total of 1.51, and since we're English unit, feet per second. Okay, and this is our final answer for this problem. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.